Hello, it's Thursday, November 17th, and you're watching The Big Story with me, Chiao Suen. Subscribe to The Straits Times channel to stay up to date with our live news updates. Now, more than a year after the water treatment company went into li liquidation, it seems like trouble continues to bubble for High Flux's former leaders after its former executive board were charged in court today. High Flux founder and former chief executive Olivia Lam, former chief financial officer Cho Wee Ping, and four former board members were charged over High Flux's intentional failure to disclose information relating to the Tuas Spring Integrated Water and Power Project. Lam, who is now 61, was also charged with an offence under the Companies Act for her failure in ensuring High Flux's compliance with accounting standards. She is out on agency bail of $100,000. The charges followed joint investigations launched in June 2020 by the authorities, which include the Singapore Police Force, the Monetary Authority of Singapore and the Accounting and Corporate Regulatory Authority. State investor Tamasic will write off its $275 million US dollar investment in cryptocurrency firm FTX, irrespective of the outcome of the firm's bankruptcy protection filing. FTX's collapse due to liquidity woes has shaken the crypto world and seen its CEO Sam Bankman-Fried stepping down. In a statement released today, Tamasic said that the total cost of its investment was only 0.09% of its net portfolio value of 403 billion Singapore dollars and that it had no direct exposure in cryptocurrencies. Over in economic news, Singapore's key non-oil exports shrank 5.6% year-on-year last month, snapping 22 months of growth. The drop was worse than the 1.7% contraction forecast by analysts in a Bloomberg poll. The weak numbers were led by the fall in electronic exports, which have now declined for three straight months. Three out of ten BTO projects that will be launched in the November sales exercise will come under the prime location public housing model. All three projects are located in mature estates, with Ulu Pandan Banks and Gimmo Natura in Queenstown and Kalang Horizon in Kalang Wampo. The sales exercise will begin on November 23rd with over 9,500 new flats that will be launched in both mature and non-mature estates. And if you're planning activities for the weekend, here's something you could check out. Visitors to the Singapore Botanic Gardens can now explore the park seamlessly by using a 200-metre-long continuous and barrier-free pedestrian bridge, which links two sections of the garden that were previously separated. The gardens will now be more accessible to all visitors, including families with young children and those with mobility issues, who will no longer need to exit the gardens and cross the road to go from one section to another. And those are our top stories for today. Visit straightstimes.com for more news and our YouTube channel for more videos. Subscribe by hitting the red button below. I'm Chiao Suen and I'll see you tomorrow on The Big Story.